Oh, I didn't see you there. Hey, you, uh, you like my new house? What do you mean, no? Wait, look, let me show you the inside first. See, look, we got like a cooking pot and a, uh, and a bed. <sighs> well, I guess we're throwing on mods again then. Shadow Legends! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one, was you? The following is an emergency protocol by Heavy Burns Incorporated. Are you tired of collecting cheese wheels in Skyrim? Um, yeah? Do you want to collect characters in Raid Shadow Legends instead? <laughs> How did you guess? Well, luckily for you, Raid has over 500 champions to collect, each with their own skill trees and millions of artifacts to find and equip. Tell me more! Oh, I will! Personally, I love the character design and the overall tone of the game. The voice acting actually really gives me some Middle Earth vibes and collecting new champions is actually quite exciting, as they're all pretty unique and interesting in their own way. I was actually especially impressed with some of the new more powerful champions you have the chance of unlocking later down the line, and they actually give you a reason to keep playing and something to strive for, which you don't really get in many games nowadays. If you download now, you can find me in the game under the name Heavy Burns. But Burns, what's new in Raid? Well, Raid just released the Artifact Forge. The Artifact Forge? The Artifact Forge! A station where you can save time and craft artifacts directly as well as a whole new advanced quest system with amazing awards. And that's not all. They also brought out some amazing new champions and they're developing an incredible looking Doom Tower as we speak. Go to the video description, click on the special links and if you're a new player you'll get an extra 100,000 silver plus 1 energy refill plus 10 mystery shards plus 1 free champion. All of the things I just listed will be waiting for you in game in your inbox here. Thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for helping to make videos such as these possible, and I'll see you in game. Seriously, I need friends, please add me. On the 4th of September 2012, Hearthfire released for The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. It allowed you to construct your own home, adopt your own children, and hire your own bards and stewards. The DLC was the minor of the three release for Skyrim, but still touched on a heavily requested area. And over the years, just like every other aspect of the game, the modding community has had its fair share of fun building upon the Hearthfire mechanics in their own way. And so I'm going to show you some of my personal favourite mods to improve this DLC in a pretty interesting way. The goal of this is to make the three choices you have within the DLC into an actual choice of playstyle not just which area you like the look of the most. And to start this off, I've began with an exterior overhaul of all three locations in the form of Draco's Hearthfire Homes exterior, a mod that revamps the exteriors of each of the home options to give them a more unique tone. And these styles will go hand in hand with the mod choices I've made in this video to offer a unique playstyle to each of the three locations. With each of the mods selected for each location, I wanted to offer some pretty crucial player choice in which area would suit their character build and their goals throughout a playthrough. And so let's take a quick look at the overhauls for each of the Hearthfire homes and then we'll break them down and then show you which mods I've included in order for you to make your decision. Halyarkin Hall has been transformed into a game long quest to build up from nobody to a noble by working on your own farm in the process. Winstead Manor is now a quest in becoming the ultimate stonesmith entrepreneur by running your own mine. And Lakeview is a noble's path to live in luxury as the count of a small nearby village. Each of these homes is now meant to offer as much role-playing choice to go along with the hours you invest into other aspects like character creation and skill progression because your home should be just as big of a part of your character's story as the quests they partake upon. And in many ways, 
Your player's home should be its own character within itself. These changes will offer a whole new outlook on how you view this DLC, and brings its importance up to par with both Dawnguard and Dragonborn. So where do we begin with each of these settlements? Well, let's take a look at Winstad, the home located in the cold, damp bogs of Morthal, that before these changes was commonly the ugly stepchild of the three locations. But we aim to fix that by beginning with the mod simply titled Winstad Mine, which when stumbled upon will be left in ruins occupied by bandits that will need to be cleared out. And then you can begin to rebuild this location hiring staff to help you along the way and expanding the expedition to the surrounding areas, creating new cabins, a blacksmith, an office to control the operation, guard towers and so much more, allowing a playthrough long journey running the biggest mining operation in all of Skyrim. Winstad Mine is yours to reclaim and finally gives you a strong justification in choosing this location out of the three. But being located so close to Morvarth's lair, you can expect your fair share of dangers that might get in the way of you living a happy life with no threats of a nearby vampire enclave. But what about Helyarkon? the middle child of the three Hearthfire siblings. Well in my opinion, this one offers the most desirable progression of the three, beginning you off as a simple farmer, until your business is profitable enough to purchase the keep that taunts you from the hill above. From the same mod author as the last, we begin with Helyarkin Farm, a ruined, abandoned shack in its original form. Then, after acquiring the deed, you can start to build up, creating many new buildings and hiring new staff just like Winstad Mine. And this being so close to Helyarkin Hall itself, it gives you a solid plot of land to start building up your ranch. But the main focus of this settlement is further up the hill, added by a separate mod author who you might know from little mods such as LC Citadel. Feudal Keep is a grand new player home purchasable for 40,000 gold that after successfully building up your home at Helyarkin Hall and thriving in your farming business, you can purchase for yourself to become the lord of your own mini settlement on the border between Whiterun and the Pale. This keep is as well designed as you would expect from this author and it gives you the best new home to supply everything you will ever require from a bedchamber fitting to a true lord to an armory to display your many trophies and war spoils your Helyarkin journey is complete for you to partake upon, alongside your progression in the game, and brings you the freshest new take on an otherwise pretty boring Hearthfire system, with one of the most immersive role-playing opportunities you could build from Hearthfire's DLC. Now, to change up Lakeview, our new retirement home, we're going to add the mod Lakeview Manor, as it should be. This mod keeps the core function of Lakeview the same, but revamps pretty much all of its furnishings and decorations to be up to date with the modern player homes you will see on the Nexus, with many of the common assets you're familiar with such as a key rack, a hanging closet, and even a fully functional kitchen. This mod also remodels the basement, allowing for an interactive treasury and new additional display areas to store all of your items. And paired with a quick small mod adding a small town of Pine Watch just down the road, gives you the perfect, more classic style player home if that's more your style, and you don't want to actually do any work throughout your playthrough like the other two options. Hearthfire has always been something really interesting to me since it first got released. I remember in my first run of Skyrim, I wanted two things, to be able to build my own house, and to be able to adopt children that you could raise and eventually have as your own follower with enough time. And while that second one was only half the way introduced into the game, it kind of did feel like Bethesda was reading my mind. And I've got no real problem with Hearthfire in the base game, it did everything it was meant to do. But as we have came to learn on this channel, and in the modding community in general, 
if something can be improved through the power of creative individuals making mods, then it always will be. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.